What is going on guys welcome back in this video we're going to build a multiplayer tic-tac-toe game in python and we're not going to use pygame to do that we're not going to build a fancy ui around it we're going to use a command line we're going to use the command line only for that because the focus of today's video should be on the sockets on the networking on the connection and on the game logic not on the ui around it even though building a ui around it wouldn't be too complicated but it would distract today from the network content so if you really want to see a video on the ui of a tic-tac-toe game as well let me know in the comment section down below if a lot of you guys are interested i might make a second video on that as well the goal of today's video is that we want to have a python script that we can run across two different machines so these machines can be in the same network they can be uh they can connect over the internet so they one guy can be in australia one guy in europe doesn't matter they can play tic-tac-toe together of course if you want to run this via the internet you need to set up your firewall properly and all that this is not part of today's tutorial but we're going to build a Python script that can connect to computers and they can then play tic-tac-toe via the command line. This is the goal. And for that, we're going to get right into the code. We're going to only need two libraries for that. And they're going to be uh, core Python modules. The first one is socket and the second one is threading. Now threading, I actually used this in my prepared code uh, with the following idea. I thought that we want to have one thread for processing our user input and one thread for getting the actions of the, uh, from the opponent. But then I thought actually, you know, when I'm, when, when it's my turn, I'm putting something into the command line. When it's my opponent's turn, uh, turn I'm receiving. So actually we wouldn't need multiple threads. We can just uh, change the states and, and do it like that. But uh, yeah, for this video, we're going to do it with threading. I just wanted to mention that I don't think that you actually need the threading module. So you would actually be able to do this with socket only as well. I think so. So let's start with what was that uh, with a simple tic tac toe class. And we're going to start with the constructor with the init function. And we're going to say self dot board and we're going to initialize the board. Now what you see here all the time is GitHub Copilot. I didn't disable it for that video. Um, it's just suggesting what I might do here. Sometimes we're going to use it. Sometimes we're going to ignore it. It's not necessarily part of the tutorial. In this case, it uh, suggests that we create a list full of zeros or lists of zeros. We don't want to do that because we want to do uh, spaces. So we're going to just ignore this and uh, do it like that. Now, in this case, it auto completes this. So we want to have uh, three rows and inside of these three rows, we want to have three empty fields like that. Then we're going to also say basic stuff like whose turn is it? We're going to start with X. The uh, U is going to be the X by default. And then the opponent is going to be uh, O. Now you might say, okay, how do we decide that if two people run the script, both are X, uh, we're going to set uh, we're going to give X to the one who hosts the game and O to the one who connects to the game. So we're going to have this client being able to host the game and to connect to a game. So then we're going to also set a winner in the beginning to none. We're going to set <clears throat> game over to false. And we're going to also have a counter for the turns because we want to be able to determine a tie. So if all fields are full, uh, so basically, if the counter is, uh, if the counter is nine, we're going to have a tie if there's no winner. And the first function that we're going to write is the host game function. The host game function is self explanatory, we're going to pass a host, we're going to pass a port, and we're going to open up a socket listening for incoming connections, accepting connections, and then handling them. Uh, so we're going to basically say, um, server equals socket, socket dot uh, AF inet. Oh, actually, we need socket dot socket socket AF inet socket sock stream because we want to have a TCP socket TCP internet socket, then we're going to bind the socket to a tuple of host and port. And we're going to say server dot listen for one connection. And what we want to do then is we want to accept the next connection. So client and address is going to be server accept. And then we're going to say self dot uh, dot u is going to be x because you're hosting self dot opponent is going to be o. And we're going to start a new threat threading dot threat. 
uh, target is going to be the function. Why is this blocking right now? Come on. Self dot. What are we going to call this? What did I call this handle connection? Self handle connection, which is a function that we don't have yet. And the arguments for that are going to be just a client. And we're going to start this thing immediately. And then we're going to close the server socket because we don't need to wait for more connections when we have one. This is not a server that handles multiple games. This is just one client and that's it. So we don't have a loop and we can also close the server right away. Uh, now, what we need is we need to also define a connect to game function. So connect to game, which is going to be the opposite. So one client has to run host game and one client has to run connect game. Um, and they have to specify, of course, the same target. So here we're going to also say host port. We're going to say client equals socket. Now we can use the auto completion here. It's also again an internet TCP socket. Uh, and we're going to connect this time to host and port like that. And actually this time we're going to say self u equals O and self opponent is going to be X. And what we want to do then is we want to say threading threat target is self handle connection and client again. And we want to start this. So it's actually calling the same function, which is exactly why I said that we can uh, do this in a single thread because we don't, uh, there, there's not much difference, we just need to change the states here. So now let's go ahead and write the handle connection function, this is going to be actually most of the game logic. Now the game logic itself is going to be in another function, but this is going to be the connection logic, which uh, calls the game logic. So we're going to have client here. Um, and what we want to do is want to say, okay, while self or while not self dot game over. So while while the game is not uh, over, we have created this here. While this is not the case now, actually, here we have a suggestion, we're not going to use such big uh, suggestion blocks, because then you know, I wouldn't need to do a tutorial, we're going to do it ourselves. We're going to say if it's my turn. So if self dot turn equals self dot you. So if it's your turn right now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, apply our move or we're going to first get our move from the command line. So we're going to say move equals input, enter a move. And the format is going to be uh, basically row column like that. So essentially, if you want to place it in the upper left, you would say zero, zero, uh, first row middle would be zero one and so on. So this is going to be the move. Now we're going to say if and we're going to use a function here that we haven't defined yet, we're going to call this uh, check valid move. So we're going to check if this move is even valid right now. Uh, now in order to do that, we're going to split this move on the co uh, on the on the comma, so that we can actually get the individual um, coordinates as as a tuple or array. Um, so if the move is valid, we're going to apply it. So we're going to say, oh, of course, we need this to be self dot check valid move, and this to be self dot apply move, we're going to apply the move. Uh, and we're going to use move split again. And we're going to specify that it's going to be our symbol. So we want to make the move, but we want to make it with our symbol. Um, then we want to change the turn. So the turn is going to be um, self opponent. So it's going to be their turn now. And we want to send this to the client. So we want to send client send move. And we're going to encode this using UTF eight. So the idea is again, uh, we have this game loop, we say, okay, if it's my turn right now, I'm going to uh, be able to give an input here. Um, and yeah, and then we're going to check if the move is uh, valid, if it's valid, we're going to apply it, we're going to change the turn and we're going to send the move that we just made to the client. Now, if it's not our move, or first of all, actually, let's let's handle an invalid move, we're going to just print invalid move like that. Now, the question is, no, we should be able to enter another move because we're in the loop, right? That that shouldn't be a problem. 
Um, now, if it's not our move, if it's not our turn, what we're going to do is we're going to say the data is whatever we receive from the client. So client received 1024 bytes. And then we're going to say if there is no data, we're going to break. So we're going to get out of this loop else. If there is data, uh, maybe we should also close the client here. Um, if there is data, what we're going to do is we're going to say self dot apply move. And we're going to decode the data. Uh, actually, we can take the suggestion here. We're going to decode the data using UTF-8. We're going to split it again on the comma. And this time we're going to make the move for the opponent. So it's the same thing that we did here. But this time we also decode the data that we got from the socket. And of course, self.turn is going to be set to self.u because it's now our turn again. So as you can see, this loop is constantly switching between this and this and this and this all the time. Um, and here we process our move here, we get the uh, move of the opponent and both clients in this case are updating their field to be the same as uh, that of the opponent. And if for some reason we get out of the loop, we say client close. Now I'm not sure if this is going to cause any problems because essentially we're closing here already, then we're breaking out of the loop and closing again. So this might cause some issues. Now, actually, if we break out of the loop, we're closing anyway. So let's just delete this here. Um, yeah, so the next function that we're going to implement is the apply move function, which is just going to set, uh, which is just going to um, put the symbol at the respective position. This is not going to be a too complicated function. So we're going to say def actually is this, we need to put this here, def apply move, and it's going to be self then the move and then the player. And what we want to do here is want to say if self game over. So if the game is over already, we're going to return. Otherwise, if it's not game over, we're going to increase the counter by one so that when we reach nine, we know it's a tie if there's no winner. Then we're going to say self dot board. And here we want to say this is actually already a good suggestion, we want to get um, the first part of the move and the second part of the move, which is an array of strings. In this case, we're going to typecast it into integers, we're going to just assume that the input is valid. Uh, and we're going to set this to the player. So the symbol actually. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to say self dot print board. Now this is going to be another function that we have not implemented yet. The functions are um, building on top of each other. So because of that, uh, we're going to need to def uh, we're going to need to use them before we define them. So we're going to print the board after we made the move so that we see what's currently up. And then we're going to check if there's a winner. So if self dot winner, uh, or actually, first of all, we need to check, we need to check if there's a winner. So self, this is actually look, GitHub Copilot knows what I want to do. Check for winner, this is what we're going to do. Uh, and then if self dot winner equals self come on dot you then we're going to print you win elif uh, self dot winner self opponent you lose and if there is no winner so if we don't have um, if the winner is not the opponent if the winner winner is not you then we're going to say it is a tie. But only this is only the case if the counter is equal to nine, because otherwise we don't have a tie because we can still take actions. Uh, let me just see if I didn't mess up anything. Uh, we're going to say self check for a winner. Actually, we should do it like that. If there is a winner. So let's rename this to self check if one check if the game is one. In general, if it is one, we're going to check who won. And otherwise, we're going to just say, okay, is the counter equal to nine, then it's a tie if there's no winner, otherwise, basically do nothing. Uh, in all of these cases, also exit. So quit the script, basically. And 
that should be it. That is the apply move function, nothing too complicated here. Uh, let's now go ahead and define the check if one function, or actually maybe we should define the check check valid move function first, which is also what GitHub Copilot suggests. So let's do it. We're going to check if the move is valid. How do we check if the move is valid? Very simple. We just, this is a one liner. We just return uh, if the board at this point is empty. So if this here is actually uh, a blank space. So the return value is going to be the Boolean uh, of the expression if the self board at this position is empty and we don't need that last uh, bracket here, I think. And we don't need that as well. There you go. This is our uh, check valid move function. Then the check if one function is going to be quite simple as well. We want to pass self here. Uh, it's basically just going to check all scenarios for winning. So do we have some rows? Do we have some columns? Or do we have diagonals? So uh, we're going to say for I or actually for row in range three. Uh, and we're going to say if self dot board zero, or actually row zero equals self board row one equals self board row two, and it's not equal to an empty string, uh, not to an empty string to a blank space. This means that uh, we have a row. So in this case, we would say self dot winner equals whatever we have at this position. Like that. So the logic is the following, we go through all the rows, we look if there's a row where uh, each field has the same symbol. And if this is the case, and of course, this symbol is not the default symbol, then this symbol is the winner. Um, and then we can say self dot game over equals true to stop the loop. And then we can just return true because there is a winner. Um, then we can do the same for the columns. I actually didn't want to write this, but GitHub Copilot did. So let's just use it. Then again, we're going to say if self dot board, uh, in this case, I think we need to do it in a different way. We need to say self board um, zero column, one column and two columns. So not row zero, row one, row two, but zero column, one column, two columns. So um, the the variable that we have here, the control variable is going to be in the second, uh, in the second set of square brackets. And here we're going to also say self dot winner equals self dot board, zero column, self dot game over equals true, and return true. There you go. And last but not least, we want to check for diagonals, uh, we want to check for uh, zero, zero, one, one, Two, two, which is what uh, they're doing here, what GitHub Copilot is suggesting here. Uh, in this case, also as well, self.winner is going to be the first one. Self.gameOver is going to be true. And we're going to return true. And then last but not least, if self.board02, uh, so basically the other diagonal, a zero two means first row last, then in the middle again, and then last row, uh, first item. If those are equal, we're going to also say self winner equals self board uh, zero two self game over equals true, and return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. That is the function. Now let's go ahead and um, define I think we only need one more function, right? Because we have everything else implemented, we only need to print board function, this should be quite easy. This is just def print board, I think it up copilot will suggest this already, uh, we're essentially or actually, this is not how I want to do it. So let's get rid of that. How I want to do it is I want to say for row in range three, I want to print with a separator. So I want to say uh, space, then this pipe symbol space. And then I want to join on that. So dot join uh, self board the respective row. 
And then what I want to do is if the row is the last row, uh, if the row is not the last row, so if this row is not equal to two, then I want to print uh, the separator for the rows, which is that. Uh, the idea is that we want to have the separators within the row and then we want to separate the individual rows, but we don't want to do this for the last row because we didn't do it for the first row or above the first row. So uh, this is how we're going to print the board. And I think we're actually done. So let's try this first locally, then we're going to try it with a second laptop. Um, now, first of all, we need to we need to copy that and have two scripts because one script is going to uh, to host and one script is going to connect. So we're going to copy is this in refactor copy file. We're going to copy this to name main to py. Uh, and in the main py, we're going to just host the server. So we're going to say game equals tic tac toe like that and then game connect to game localhost and some port. And then we're going to go to main two. No, not running. Editing. And we're going to actually say game equals tic tac toe. Now, of course, you can also implement a menu so that you can choose um, in a menu in a command line menu if you want to host or connect. This is maybe more user friendly. Um, and then we want to say here game dot connect to game also localhost same port as before. So now let's go ahead and see if this works. We're going to open up two command lines. So one here and one here, we're going to navigate to the directory. Oh, actually, this is not the directory. This is the directory. So we're going to run main py first, because this is the server. And then we're going to go here and say Python main to py. Um, what's the problem here? Oh, I used connect to game both we need to use host game here. There you go. So let's run this here again. Let's run this here again. Now you can see here enter a move. Now let's start with zero zero. You can see I got this here. Now it's my turn here. And let's go with one one. There you go. Now I can go with uh, zero one here. Now I can go with two one here. And now I can win here by saying zero two. There you go, you win. Uh, in this case, we didn't get a you lose here. Why is that? We didn't get a you lose. We need to think about this here. All right, I found a simple way to fix this. All we need to do is we need to take this client sent here and put it above the apply move. Because when we apply the move, we have this um, section where we win or lose and then we exit, uh, which of course means that when we do that, we exit and we don't send this anymore. So by sending this first before exiting, we make sure that the other side also gets our move. And then, of course, uh, they also can process their win or loss. So we need to do this in both scripts here. There you go. And now this should work. So if I now go and say Python main and Python main two zero zero one one. 0, 1, 2, 2, 0, 2, you win, you lose, there you go. Now let's go for uh, the other one. So let's go for second player wins. Uh, like that. Now we're going to go with 1, 0. And here we're going to go with 2, 1. There you go, you win, you lose, it works. Now let's test the tie if it works and then we're going to test it with a second machine. So uh, enter a move, zero, zero. We're going to say here, zero, one. Here we're going to say zero, two. Here we're going to say one, zero. Here we're going to say um, one, one. Then one, two. Now we need to be careful because we don't want to have the diagonal. 
So what we want to do is we want to go into the middle. Now, actually, okay, uh, the problem is that I already won. This is this is stupid. Let's let's go ahead and do this again. I accidentally won for X. So let's go again. And let's go with two zero. It's a tie. There you go. All right. So now we're going to try this with my second laptop here. So I have this Linux machine here as well, in addition to the Windows machine that I'm recording on. So what we're going to do first here is we want to know our IP address uh, using IP config. And you can see here that my IP address locally is 192.168.0.206. So we want to actually host on that IP address. So we want to change this here to 192. 1680206. And of course, I also have the main 2py file on my Linux machine. Here, we also want to connect to that address. So we're going to say, we're going to change localhost in here to the same address. I'm not going to record this, by the way. I'm just going to do this. There you go. And now, for some reason, it seems like it only works on the Windows subsystem for Linux for me, even though it was not the case yesterday with a prepared code. So maybe for you, it also works in the CMD on Windows. I think that's not a problem with the script, but something with Linux, maybe uh, what you want to do is you want to direct the Windows subsystem for Linux to the directory. And then you want to say Python three main PY like that. So it's going to start the server. Now I'm going to connect to the server. And there you go. So you can play zero, zero. Now I can say zero one. Now I can say zero. Uh, let's go with one zero. Now I can go with zero two. And here I can now say uh, two zero. There you go. You win. And here I got you lose. So it also works across uh, two machines. Now, if you want to do this in the internet, obviously, what you need to do is you need to specify the private IP for hosting. So in here, uh, this would be the same you host on your private IP. But if I want to connect with this laptop from uh, Australia, for example, what I need to do is I need to specify for connecting uh, the public IP address of this computer. So uh, whatever you get when you go to my IP dot is, and of course, you need to set up the firewall to work uh, properly. So you need to allow the connection. But this is how you build a simple multiplayer tic tac toe game in Python. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.